how exactly businesses have been taking advantage of the YouTube platform. When we started in 2016, there were 47 million Filipinos online. Sure enough, our bets paid off. The internet users and usage in the Philippines exploded. In fact, our studies tell us that Filipinos are one of the most heaviest internet users in the world. They just overtook the Thai users on that spot. At YouTube, we really believe our biggest strength is content diversity. People come to YouTube to watch different kinds of content. We would never win this business if we did not have content that was mainstream. Hence, we partnered with media companies. The one common goal was serving the Filipino user. There was a common realization. We live in a cross-screen, multi-device world. The Filipino user watches their favorite show on TV, searches for it on YouTube at the same time, discovers music on the radio, comes and catches up on YouTube. It's multi-screens, and that's what the user wants. Hence, a collaboration started. The whole ecosystem grew. Media channels from across the country grew by 10x. We had a 10x growth in the number of media channels above a million subscribers. Where did this lead us? Today, every single show you see on television is now available on YouTube for catch-up. Our strength lies in the content diversity. We had to build and nurture local Filipino creators. We invested a lot into doing this. The whole <coughs> ecosystem grew much faster than we had expected. These numbers do not exist in any other country. 20x growth in the number of channels with 100k plus subscribers. 20x growth in the number of channels with a million plus subscribers. 5x growth in the number of attendees at our event called YouTube FanFest. If you think about prime time, we've always associated prime time with a few hours in the evening. Our data on YouTube tells us that the consumption of YouTube during the day is quite consistent. Hence, we really believe prime time is no longer limited to a few hours of the day. Prime time is genuinely personal. Filipinos have made their own prime time. Filipinos watch a variety of content on YouTube. Uh, you know, the most notable categories would be what you would expect, entertainment, music, but also what you would not expect. They watch a lot of gaming, they watch a lot of lifestyle videos, they watch a lot of how-to. A lot of Filipinos go to YouTube to watch how-to and learn, and that told us that we need to invest a lot more in educative content. In fact, we did a study last year, where how-to as a category turned out to be the top most demanded category by Filipinos. So I would look at this in terms of the potential. Uh, in Southeast Asia, like I started, I, in 2016, I walked into this job noting that Philippines is one of the largest markets in Southeast Asia. Of course, it is the second largest population in Southeast Asia. And by definition, it has a, one of the largest potentials. And this is not just about Southeast Asia. For me, it's in the world of Asia, it's a really large market. Let me just reinforce a point. When we bring out programs like Next Up and Pop Up, it only comes in a few markets in Asia, like five to six. We made sure Philippines sits in the top five, top six, and these programs come into the Philippines. It's that important. So I want to emphasize it's not important just for Southeast Asia, it's important for us across Asia. We can say that a majority today comes from Metro Manila. We want to expand to beyond Metro Manila and, and bring this to you know uh, users beyond. But I would like to add, we are seeing a lot of interest in accessing YouTube from non-metro areas. To further reinforce that point, a survey told us that rural moms come and visit YouTube once every week. But that's once every week, not once every day. They're not able to do that because they still have the same barriers of access speeds and affordability.